Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's lesson. I am very pleased to have you with me today. I hope you've had a great Wednesday and you are all warm. I know in some parts of the country it was a bit cold today, but I hope you are all warm and ready for today's class. So I am Ms. Gasa and I am going to take you for this lesson. Today we're going to be talking about something very interesting. Okay, I just want you to have a look at that for a moment. So today, in today's class, we're going to have a bit of math in our English lesson. Okay. What I mean by that is we are going to look at word sums in an English way. If you have a look there at the words in red, it says teasing plus bullying equals low self-esteem. I want to know from you if you agree with this statement or if you disagree. And if you disagree, it is completely fine. Maybe you think teasing and bullying equals to something else, or maybe you think it's bullying and something else that equals to low self-esteem. So this is just up to you. I want to hear your ideas on our little math English problem there. So if you would like to answer, share your ideas, you can raise your hand or you can say in the chat your answer. So I'm just going to give you a moment. So you can raise your hand or you can just say on the chat what you think. If you agree or disagree. And if you agree, tell us why you agree. If you disagree, tell us what your word sum would be. Your opinion, class? What are your views on this? Teasing and bullying equals low self-esteem? Is that a yes? Is that a no? What are your views? Okay, while you write in your answers or raising your hand so you can share with the class, I'd just like to welcome all of you. Welcome, Galaxy. Welcome, Megan. Welcome, Rutendo. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Welcome, Sharon. And if I missed your name, I do apologize. I will get to it. But I'd like to welcome all of you. So Galaxy says he disagrees because some bullies don't get attention at home. Okay, Rutenda says uh, she agrees with this. Okay, I see there's people that agree and disagree. But first, let's also just break it down for a moment. What is teasing? What is your definition of teasing? Because I feel like teasing and bullying are different things. I don't know about you. Okay, Megan says she agrees. She says that most cause of suicide and self-harm are caused from bullying. Bullying is about empowerment. I share that sentiment with you. It's people wanting to have power over others. And Galaxy says it is to get attention. Okay. Sarah says making fun of someone. So I just want you for a moment to tell me what you think teasing is. What is your definition of teasing? Remember, you can raise your hands as well and you'll have an opportunity to speak to the class. Megan says it's marking someone about their flaws. Okay, that's agree. I agree with that. Rutendo says teasing and bullying is the same thing. Mm, okay. I hear you. Tyree says, when someone says or does things to you that are mean or annoying. Ah, okay, that's true. All right, so teasing is a little different from bullying because it is being made fun of in a good humored way and you deliberately 
humid way, which is del deliberately hurtful, usually by someone who cares. Okay, so what this means is you, it's a form of joking around. Nobody will be offended maybe at the end of the day and we can laugh about it afterwards. So when you think of the word teasing, you can associate it with words like bantering. Okay, so it's just a bit of banter. You know, it's something that is true, something maybe you don't like, you know, um, but we can all get along afterwards and nobody will be hurt. Nobody will feel like they need to hold a grudge afterwards. Okay. So Megan also says that Bullying is spoken with intent to hurt someone with no humor. That is absolutely right. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing your ideas and your thoughts on our little maths problem in our English class. Remember to take my email address if you have any questions, whether it's for this lesson or any other lesson or anything related to English, please email me. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, so by the end of this lesson, you will know how to scan text features. When we talk about text features, we're talking about the title, the heading, who wrote the article and you will, you will need to make connections with your own experiences or knowledge. Okay, you also have to evaluate, draw conclusions, and share your opinion, and you have to explain why bullying is a problem in society. The last thing you will, at the end of the lesson, you will have known or do is understand the purpose of newspaper opinion pieces and their influence. Okay, so this is the opinion piece that we are going to look at today. So I want you to have a look at it for a moment. We are not going to read from here. The writing is very small, so don't worry about that. I just want you to take in the layout of the article. As you can see, it's a newspaper article. It's from the Sunday Times. In the middle there at the top, it says it's an opinion. So this tells you that you are not going to get something that is just factual. Okay, you're not just going to get a report about what happened, to who it happened to, when it happened to, how, all those things. And it also gives you the date. Okay, and our title there is Demon of Bullying, a Reflection of a Brutalized Society. The subtitle is The Suicide of a 16-Year-Old Soshangiva Boy Brings Home the Tragedy of How Young Lives Ruined by Victimization and Violence. This is a piece written by Felicia Opelt, and it seems she's a regular uh, opinion piece writer for the Sunday Times because her page has a title there. Her pieces have a title that says, Better Sweet. Okay, so take in all of that for a moment. So when you're looking at text, when you have a text for reading and comprehension, so these are the things that you have to look at take into consideration, is it a magazine piece? Is it a book blurb? Where is it from? Because this influences how you understand what is written and how you answer the questions. Remember, if at any point you have any questions, raise your hand, let me know. You can write it on the text as well. So there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind before reading especially if you're reading for comprehension, okay? All right, so you're going to be asked questions at the end. So you need to go in there with a game plan. I want to know from you, what do you do when you have a reading comprehension? So what game plan do you have? What strategies do you use so that you can maximize your time, so that you can get the most of the reading? Remember that when you read, you're not just reading passively. You need to be actively reading the passage so that you can make sense of it, so that you can comprehend. All right, one of the things you need to do, what, what you need to keep in mind is that there'll be the use of emotive and manipulative language, okay? And you will find out the purpose. You need to keep in mind that there'll be a purpose and this purpose will include and exclude certain information, right? And the, the piece will be biased and it will include arguments from the writer's perspective. And it might also be prejudiced and include stereotypes as well. 
bear in mind as well that the author or the text will have some kind of social, political, and cultural background. Okay, and remember that there will be direct and implied meaning, denotations and connotations, and facts as well. Right, let's have a look at our article. But before we do, I want to know some tips from you about game plan. What do you do when you have, an, when you have to read an article or a comprehension? What do you keep in mind? Okay. Megan says that try and find the central idea of the piece. That's correct. And you can do that by looking at the title. You look at the words demon, you look at the word brutalized. It tells you what you need to expect. Okay. Tari says skim and find keywords or key phrases. That's correct. All right. So those are the things that you need to keep in mind that what can I expect from the article based on the heading and the sub heading, the title and of the opinion piece. And from that, you can also think about what will the mood or the tone of the poem be just by looking at all those things before you start reading. Okay. Thank you for the answers to that question. Here's our newspaper article. We've already looked at the title, the subtitle, the heading, and who the author is, or who the writer is. Volunteers to read? Who would like to read for us? It would be nice to also have different people read for us today, hear different voices. So if you'd like to read, please raise your hand, or you can tell me on the chat. It's quite a long piece, so different people can read the article. Volunteers to read? All right, Tyrese and Hurt want to go for it. Okay, so Hurt, you will read this first page for us. Tyrese, you will read the second, and Megan, you can read the third. All right, okay, let's just. I will unmute, I said hurt, right? Yes, I'll unmute hurt first. Hurt? Uh, all right, I'll start. A teenager takes an electrical wire, swings it around a beam in the house he has lived in for most of his life. How does the 16 year old figure out what the best way of dying is? Does he carefully consider the options before setting, settling on hanging? In the fast ticking sounds before his death, did time deaden into a slow motion tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, into which memories whirlwind at a breathless pace? Did remorse towards his mother and his stepfather, his siblings, swirl into those seconds that he would leave behind a crater of grief and unanswered questions? Did the punches and pulling, the jeers and mocking of four teenagers who had assaulted him the previous day at school ring like taunting bells in his ears? Was the shame of being beaten in front of schoolmates the one thing that propelled David Longuane into an unthinkable void of despair? Did he step onto a chair and kick it away to be strangled to a lonely, unnatural death because he felt so utterly bereft of hope? What makes a child so despairing that he takes his own life at 16? Instead of squaring his shoulders in determination to face whatever future, however tricky, however complicated, that lies before him largely unblemished? Fantastic, great job. I hope you can hear, I'm clicking for you. Today I'm not gonna clap for you guys, I'm clicking. Well done, thank you so much. Thank you, Hurt. Okay, and I think I said Rain is going to read the next one. 
So let's go to the next page. And then I'll unmute Lorraine. Hi, Rain. Hello. Hi. Right, it's your turn. Please read this page for us. All right. The story of David Longwane from Soshanguve, published in the Times on Tuesday, is perhaps insignificant in the far greater, more important and busy scheme of our lives. I've never been to Soshanguve. It's somewhere north of Pretoria, I'm told but a child died there on Valentine's Day, that tacky commemoration of romantic love during which we artificially fawn over husbands and lovers. On that day, this child, a child of this country, an unforgivable symbol of what is so very wrong with this country and its education system, died. The scale of bullying and physical brutality among our nation's children is horrific. What makes it more uncomfortable is that this brutal pastime is not restricted to the far-flung anonymous townships and squatter camps of South Africa. It is omnipresent. It occurs in the pretty, manicured, confined spaces of the private school elite, the better-off neatness of former Model C schools, the frayed aspirations of lower middle-class schools. It lurks everywhere, captured on smartphones, retold and replayed with a barbaric glee at lunch breaks. Another fantastic job. Thank you. That's me clicking for you today. No. Oh, uh, thank you. All right, then it is Megan's turn. Okay. Um, like I said, it's quite a long article. So if you want to read please write in the chat then you will follow after megan i encourage you all to try and read out loud i think it's very important for you to practice it will help you with your reading and your pronunciation skills so let's go to the next page and while they are reading please keep in mind what i said about the tips when you're reading a long article what things to look out for Okay, and if there's anything you're unsure about, anything you'd like to ask, if it's even words that you're not sure about, please just write that on the chat. Okay, it's Megan's turn now. Host, please unmute Megan. Megan, you have been unmuted. Thank yes, you. you are. Hi. Hi. Okay, go for it, Megan. Quite frankly, we are raising too, far too many bullies. The Department of Basic Education seems to be somewhat flexible in, flexible in its approach to bullies and the extent of the discipline that is, or should be, meted out to deal with them. A female teacher had been slapped in the face by one of the teenagers who victimized David. He was suspended for a for a miser miserably seven days. Was that punishment appropriate to his crime? The department's first instinct seems to be the pro to protect the principal and teachers, hiding behind the convenience of investigations and offerings of counseling after the fact. But bullying is not a phenomenon for which the department is to blame. While officials might be incompetent in dealing with the problem, David Longuane's death is a reflection of brutalized society and parents that are just too lax about instilling basic values in their children. As parents, as parents, many of, many of us have abdicated responsibility for the rearing of our, of our offspring. We expect other people or authority figures to take care of some pretty basic stuff like manners, discipline, and self-respect. Thank you so much. Make it all done. Can you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Great job. Fantastic, thank you. Any questions at this particular moment? Anything you'd like to ask? Okay, Galaxy says phenomenon. You're not sure what the word phenomenon means. 
Klaus, what does the word phenomenon mean? Phenomenon, what does it mean? Phenomenon, what does it mean? Okay, so Hertz says, is it, is it, isn't it just an, an event that happened? Phenomenon, is it just, let's see where it is. Okay, it's in the second paragraph, right there at the top of the second paragraph. So when you are unsure of what a word means, it is very helpful for you to look at the whole sentence and think of the context of the article because in exam settings you won't have the luxury of, of bringing in a dictionary or at the sorcerers so you have to make use with what you have which is the words that are around you and they should give you clues of what the word means okay Musa says it is a fact or a situation. Mm -hmm. And Savo the kid says it's a strange event. Okay, those are actually right answers. Okay. Hurt also says is a or rather something that occurs consistently. That's right. All right, fantastic. Yes, that's correct. That's what it, exactly what it means. All right, we need volunteers to read the next page. Come on, class. Let's hear those lovely voices. You sound like professional readers. If there was such a thing as like professional readers, you guys would get jobs as professional readers. The closest thing to being a professional reader is a news reader on TV or on the radio. But they also have other things to do, so it's not just that that they do. Uh, I see Katla says the mic is broken, so that is fine. Okay, Galaxy's mic is also broken. Okay, from the people that have already read, would you like to go again? Okay, Tyrese would like to go again. All right, Tyrese, host, please unmute Tyrese so they can read. Oh, okay. Um, this paragraph, ma'am. This one, this whole page. Okay. As I edited the story of David Shongwani on Monday, the words from Ingrid Jonker's haunting poem, The Child, slipped into my mind. In her seminal work, Jonker mourns the death of black children under apartheid, growing up under the menacing presence of soldiers, guns, and violence. Our children have been liberated from a nightmare past, but have to contend with demons of a different kind. To paraphrase Jonker, this child, this David child, also just wanted to play in the sun in, oh no, big, big word. Uh, mm, mm, Soshanguvi. Shang, Soshanguvi. Perhaps, right. uh, perhaps grow to a man who treks through all Africa. He might have wanted to grow into a giant who journeys through the whole world, but the violence of other children became the past that stopped him from doing Ooh. so. You hear that? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Well done. Thank you to our professional readers. That was an amazing job. We are done with the article. So that's the whole article covered. Thank you so much. Well done. Great job. Okay. So I want to know from you, I'm going to ask this question differently because I'm sure you've heard, a, you've heard that question phrased the same way over and over again. I'm going to ask it differently. Pretend your grandmother is in the kitchen and you're reading this newspaper article and you had to tell your grandmother what you just read, what would you say to your grandmother? Okay, so you've just read this, granny's asking, oh, you seem very interested in that newspaper today. What is it that you're reading? So you need to tell grandmother in a sentence, in a sentence or two, what that article is about. So you can raise your hand, and I'll unmute you, and then you can share your answer with the class, or you can type it. So what do you say when Gren asks, what are you reading?
Galaxy, you're absolutely right with that suggestion, with that answer. So phenomenon means suggesting the presence of danger and threatening. So what do you say to Granny? You're right there in the kitchen. She's sitting opposite you and you have the newspaper in your hand. What do you say to Granny? What are you reading? Okay, so Sarah says that I was reading a newspaper article about a young boy that committed suicide because of bullying. Nice job. Yes, uh, that's right. Plus, what do you say? What do the others say? So he committed suicide because of bullying. That's right. Okay, before we look at the questions, all right? Just answer that question that I asked. Megan says that, in my opinion, bullying gets pushed aside too often, and not only does it cause mental abuse, but verbal and physical abuse. That's right, it affects people in many different ways. Tari says, I can't believe that bullying has gone so far as to let someone talk take his own life. It happens. It happens a lot. And it's not just with children. It's with adults as well, because it's not just children that are being bullied. All right, fantastic. So here are the questions. This is a tricky question. You might think this first question is an easy one, but it's quite tricky. It says, provide the date that David Flamani's story was first published in the Times newspaper. Does anyone remember? Let's go back to the article. Okay, let's just go back a few slides. So here's the article as it appeared in the Sunday Times newspaper, hint, hint, on the, on the date written there on the opposite side of where it says Sunday Times. Sarah says 2012 February something. That's correct. But remember it said from not the Sunday Times, but from the Times newspaper. Okay, so let's go look at the, so on the Sunday Times, it appeared on the 26th of February, 2012. But I want to know when it first appeared in the Times, okay? Felicia mentions it somewhere. Uh, in the story. Okay. On Tuesday, yes, that's correct, Megan. It was written on Tuesday, the 21st of February. Okay. Why do you say that, Megan? Explain how you got to Tuesday. How did you get to Tuesday? The second line, that's right, yay. Can you see right there, it says in the times on Tuesday, but I wanted the date. So you are right to tell me the, the, the day it was written, but I also wanted the date. So on Sunday, it appeared on the 26th. So you'd have to count backward to get to when it was on Tuesday. Okay, well done. That answer is correct. Okay, let's go back to our question. So the first answer is covered. Okay, the second question is, Bittersweet is the title of Opal's opinion column. Do you think this title is appropriate after reading the article? All right, explain your answer. So this answer is worth three marks. So we've already read the article and I want you to think about the words that we spoke about yesterday. Mood, tone, theme, when you answer this question. Remember when we're scanning the article, it said right there on top of, I think it was on top of bottom, it said,
Kasha Nyeto says, yes, it brings awareness. Okay, it brings awareness in, in what way, Kasha? Sarah says, it's wrong because someone's death isn't something sweet. Yes, that's good. Yes, that's a very good answer. But remember the mark allocation. So that guides you. That guides you in how much you should answer. So you'd probably have to mention three points for that question. Okay. I see Galaxy says, I agree with Sarah. That's good. What do you have to say? Bittersweet. Look at the word bittersweet. What kind of figure of speech is it? And that should help you in your answer. Ah, there we go. Megan says bittersweet means something dull and dull isn't really what appears in the article. Okay, the article is based on a social problem. Yes, very good, fantastic. Thank you for those answers, nice answers. Okay, let's go to three. Three says, according to Opelt, the Department of Basic Education is incompetent in dealing with the problem of bullying. And parents are also doing, are also not doing a good job. I missed a word there. Not. Okay. Parents are not doing a good job. As a learner, what do you think can be done to curb bullying in schools? Curb means to prevent, to stop. Okay. So it's not a good job. The word not is missing there. What do you have to say? Remember, you can also raise your hand for the answers. These answers uh, might need a bit of, they might need a bit more. So you might prefer to speak. Okay. So Tyrese, you have your hand up. Host, please unmute Tyrese. Tyrese? Yes, ma'am. Hi. Okay. So what I was going to do um, was to create awareness about bullying by either doing a general assembly and speaking about it and, or mm -hmm. um, creating a kind of team or like a bullying committee type of thing um, to create solutions for bullying and then after that I would identify the bullies mm -hmm. um, teach them what I've learned and tell them to stop if they don't then I would suggest suspension okay wow interesting thank you so much for that answer no thank problem. you so much Okay, so that was a very lovely answer that I like the way you put it that this, the children in the school are taking control. So you're the ones that are trying to find solutions. You're the ones that are identifying the bullies and trying to help them. So it's also very important to not just look at the perspective of the victim, but to also understand that bullies are people like me and you, and they might not even know that they have a problem. and we, the people that we love, people we relate with, our friends, our loved ones. So we need to also find a solution to help them as well. Hurt says that stop punishing kids for defending themselves and send the more violent bullies to correctional facilities. Ooh, nice. Okay. Hurt. Galaxy says some bullies think that it's funny when they are when you are pushed. That's very true. That's why they continue doing it. Um, one of your classmates mentioned that it's about power. They want to feel empowered by doing something that is inappropriate. Okay, question four. Explain why the writer refers to bullying as a brutal pastime. Megan says for the previous question, for a person to become a bully, either they... 
Either they are going through something or have been hurt in a way only they can describe. It isn't their fault, but as learners, we can become more aware of their situation and try and prevent a bad environment and make the school a safe place for, for the person. Nice. Okay. Talk to the bully's parents. Okay, Kaya Kashlainetso says talk to the bully's parents. Tari says um, that's where it gets complicated when you talk to the parents. I'm guessing that's what you mean. Okay, Sarah is answering the next question. She says that a brutal pastime is when the bullies have faced trauma in the past, such as terrible households and maybe environments as well. Okay, nice. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for that answer, Sarah. But for this question, what I want you to do as well is look at the word brutal pastime. It's a figure of speech as well, just like bittersweet. They're actually the same, the, the same kind of figure of speech. Okay, so when you look at that question, think about that brutal pastime. Those words don't go well together. I want you to tell me what kind of figure of speech is brutal pastime. Megan says, you talk to the parent and they can make the situation worse than giving the bully more intention to hurt people. Very good, yes, you're absolutely right. So it might actually do more harm than good when you speak to the parents. Okay, Amy says, this is an oxymoron, yay. That's correct, it is an oxymoron, fantastic. Okay, let's go to the next question. Set of questions. Right, five, okay. What is the writer's attitude towards bullying? Okay, so for this one, you need to provide examples from the text to substantiate your answer. Remember, you were actively reading, so there's some things that you need to remember and you should be able to summarize some examples that the writer looked at. What is the writer's attitude towards bullying? Remember, you can write your answers or you can raise your hand and you can just share your answer with the class. You're absolutely right. She is against bullying. Megan, would you like to just explain just a bit further what do you mean when you say she's against bullying? Maybe provide examples as well. What evidence is there that says she's against bullying? What evidence is there? Think of examples she used, phrases she used. What evidence is there? Think of the way that she started the article, giving the description of what might have happened to David. Oh, you want me to go back to the article? Okay, I'll, go, I'll do that. Sarah has raised her hand. Sarah, you may speak. Sarah? Sarah, can you hear me? I hear you. All right, now we can hear you. Hi, Sarah. Hi, ma'am. Yeah? Ma'am? Hi. When I was reading the article, when you were reading it for us, I also remember the point in the article where the reader was saying that the teachers are the ones teaching the students basic behaviors and manners. Uh huh. So that's why I feel like her, ne her attitude was negative towards the situation. So you feel like she's blaming people or she... Yeah, she's blaming people. Okay. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Answer. Thank you.
Thank you, Sarah. Welcome, ma'am. Her says, she says it's a problem everywhere, ranging from the schools in rural areas to the elites, to the private schools. Fantastic. Because she also gives that description. She uses a lot of imagery and about how they are manicured and how they are former model Cs and just how they are different. Okay. All right. And Tyree says, look, the thing is, the writer is just stating facts. I feel she's a bit neutral towards this. So I'm not sure whether it's negative or positive. Okay, and Megan says, well, why else would she write the article? She's informing other people that bullying does more than what anyone thinks. The title, Demon of Bullying, tells us that bullying can cause people to do bad things, whether that is suicide or self-harm, and sometimes it can cause the person to hurt others as a way to repel their anger. I think I missed somebody's response there. I'm just going to go down and read it. Okay. Okay, so we'll go back to the article, but I want you to have a look at number six. So this is going to be your homework. So take a screenshot, write the question down. This is your homework. I know your previous teacher told me that you guys do homework. So I'm still expecting homework and expecting you to email me your homework in Word format. Not PDF, please. Word format. Word format. And do not lock your document, okay? Word format. Take note of question six. We'll come back to it just now. So question six says that, hi, my name is Mali. I am a bully. I'm one of the teenagers who bullied David Lomani and slapped my teacher. Okay, so do you think Mali should be punished? So we know now there's a name and maybe they, if you can, you can think of a face of a bully. It's not a monster. It's not somebody who we can't relate to. They're human just like me and you. Okay. So Mali has come to you and says, I need help. Okay. So what can I do to become a better person? What advice do you have for me? to be a better person. So you can write about 400 words, okay? So your response should be 400 words, okay? Your response should be 400 words to this. So you're going to write a letter to David. Okay, um, very quickly, Galaxy said he, you wanted to share something with the class before we end the lesson. So I'm just going to un unmute Galaxy so that you can just tell us your, your opinion, your views. Galaxy? Okay, so Galaxy says, I've been bullied since grade one. It's not nice, but I ignored the bullied. Oh, his mic is broken. Okay. All right. So that's what he wanted to share, that he was bullied since grade one, and it was not nice, but I ignored the bully. I'm so sorry that this is something you had to go through, and I hope you were able to reach out to someone that helped you and is helping you, because as we were saying at the beginning of the class, that it can... It can affect your self-esteem as well and how when you grow older what it does to you okay so if you have any questions um please email my email address there it is for your homework your homework your homework your homework please please email it to this email address okay 
All right, that is it for today's lesson. Thank you so much. You guys were fabulous. I enjoyed having you in today's lesson. We're talking about something that is very important, something that is universal, that affects everyone. And I hope you've learned something from today's class. Okay, bye everyone. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. See you tomorrow. Megan says, I think this is some advice for Galaxy. Megan says, you, you didn't let that person get to you. And that just shows how strong you are as a person. So that's just some words of encouragement for you there, Galaxy. Okay. Thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow at 2 p.m.